15,000 years ago, the Clovis people reach the Americas, and they are generally regarded as the first intelligent group of human beings to reach the continent. And they surmise this assumption based on the notion that no evidence exists for pre-Clovis culture in the Americas. The Clovis, widely believed to have been mammoth hunters, likely arrived via the Bering Land Bridge that once linked Asia and Alaska. Then they spread rapidly southward. Radiocarbon dating had previously shown the Clovis period to range from 11,500 to 10,900 radiocarbon years ago, about 13,300 to 12,800 calendar years ago, giving the culture several hundred years to reach South America. The spread of culture from North to South America from a period of 15,000 years to 11,000 years is a survivor story. The Clovis hunted to survive, developed tools based on their previous knowledge, and kept migrating southward as they had a present knowledge of where they were heading. They tell us that no other civilization reached this continent before this period, and this is belied by the sophistication we see at sites like Pumapunku, for example. The cataclysm that occurred in the very remote past put our kind to the brink of extinction. The survivors migrated away from the hostile land that was engulfed by catastrophe, and the age of structures across the world would only be dated to the re-emergence of our kind in a sophisticated setting. The re-emergence is what we consider the timeline of civilization to be, and you have to wonder just how we went from surviving in caves to building pyramids seemingly in a short period of time. Could it be that the pyramids already existed from the pre-cataclysmic age? Only in stone can the message survive. The dating by archaeologists of a timeline of history isn't considering the scale of time here on Earth. 15,000 years compared with 4.5 billion years of Earth history is minuscule at best. Why would a planet in the habitable zone of a solar system only develop intelligence after a period of 4 billion plus years? This is an insane amount of time and of course we don't have a crystal ball to see through the ages but perhaps we shouldn't be as ignorant as we are to suggest that human beings today are the pinnacle of Earth existence. The anomalies present on this planet can in fact be explained if we consider this oversight. Earth may have had thousands of previous civilizations that have emerged as we have and that our planet simply recycled that visible presence. Remember guys, metal begins to corrode instantly when exposed to the elements and that includes steel. Within 1000 years, even the most stable and modern structures today, if left to decay, will be unrecognizable in this relatively short passing of time. So then consider 10,000 years as a passage. Only stone can and will survive. It's that simple. In a cave in Mexico, the discovery has taken place of artifacts crafted by the hands of a previous wave of earthlings that is sending shockwaves reverberating around the world. Again, we are confronted with something that tells us something about the remote past and we must shed the assumption that these were cave dwelling people and consider just for a second that something else was taking place on our planet that forced the earthlings of the time to shelter within the earth because it was the only thing that could protect them. In modern times, evidence has begun piling up to indicate that humans may have arrived in North and South America even earlier than the education system Will allow us to understand and recent finds at excavation sites like the ones in Texas was dated to be potentially as old as 20,000 years, destroying preconceptions of what is being drilled into us as fact. And now the story of man is proving to be just as complex as the history of earth as the unknown and unsolved shows us that we are nothing but a drop of water in the ocean. A study published just recently in the journal Nature describes an archaeological dig at Chiquijote Cave in northern Mexico, where evidence suggests human occupation as far back as 30,000 years ago. Again, 
The dating just keeps pushing time back further and further, but the squeezing of history into these short timelines needs readdressing. Over the past 10 years of excavations, scientists have recovered almost 2,000 stone tools and fragments, and by analyzing the tools and the DNA in the sediment around them, the researchers were able to date them to between 25,000 and 30,000 years ago boggling the minds of researchers around the world to a certain extent. The team found DNA from a range of plants and animals, including black bears, rodents, bats, voles, and kangaroo rats. Interestingly though, no human DNA was found, suggesting that the owners of these tools didn't stick around for long periods. The professor who led the study told the Lost History Channel that, these early visitors didn't occupy the cave continuously. We think people spent part of the year there using it as a winter or summer shelter, or as a base to hunt during migration. This could be the America's oldest ever hotel. The team says that this discovery will likely require a rewrite of the history of humans inhabiting the Americas, but at the moment, we don't really know much about these early inhabitants. Professor goes on to say that we don't know who they were, where they came from, or where they went. They are a complete enigma, and by the time the famous Clovis population entered America, the very early Americans had disappeared thousands of years before, and there could have been many failed colonizations that were lost in time and did not leave genetic traces in the population today. As big a leap as the new study represents, you must also consider that other studies do suggest that human civilizations in some form or another arrived in North America as early as 130,000 years ago. Regardless, further excavations and analysis should help uncover more pieces of the puzzle. But what do you guys think about this exciting new development in the understanding process and the true age of our kind? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.